My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contra, you need a team of pros. you money can increase the property the value of your property can increase some of your cash flow and can make your place a more desirable place to own stay tuned we got a great show My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contract, you need a team of pros. Folks, welcome to the show. Hey, today we're talking about ADU, Auxiliary Dwelling Units. It's a new law that the state of California passed and we're gonna, get, we're gonna do a little recap and we've already started on some of these so we're gonna do a little case study on some of the projects that we have in development right now. So let's get into it and let's start talking about all things ADU. So the auxiliary dwelling units, okay, cost benefits, <clears throat> let's talk about them, let's see what they are. We've done a show on this before so we're gonna recap some of the stuff. If you wanna watch the old episode, Brian, what's the old episode? Do you know the old episode we did on this? Episode 13. Episode thir 13, uh, that is like the full episode on, on what an ADU is. So let's talk a little bit about some of the benefits. Let's talk about uh, what it's gonna to take to get started and recap some of these, these um, old topics. So let's talk about what it is. So basically, AB Assembly Bill 2299 and Assembly Bill 1069 signed into law 2016 by Jerry Moonbeam Brown uh, back in 2016. Basically, California has a shortage of housing, right? After the crash, a lot of builders went under and they haven't built houses. Well, mostly because uh, uh, the capital markets closed down, right? So the builders couldn't borrow the money to build the houses. So now we have a construction renaissance. So, but it's gonna take some time because we didn't, here in California, we haven't built any significant amount of housing in the last 10 years. So to soften the blow, to soften the pain, and also to cover, to cushion uh, a gap. So there's a gap. The new stuff that's being built is very, very expensive, okay? If you go to downtown LA, downtown uh, Long Beach, we were in downtown Long Beach today at the uh, at a AOA convention, all of these major city uh, hubs are getting an infusion of cash, but that's gonna be very expensive housing, okay? The, the state has a housing crunch uh, shortage. Some people may even call it a crisis in the affordable housing sector, okay? So it's basically for California uh, or for LA City, it's, it's anything less than $2,000, if you can believe that. It's supposed to be affordable housing. So, so there's a big problem with that, right? So one of the, the kind of makeshift, fill-in, kind of the gap uh, measures is are, are these two laws that allow basically for you to do what nobody in any planning department wanted you to do, convert your garage into a living dwelling unit, okay? It is a complete reversal. The people at the cities that, we, that we've dealt with uh, um, here in Torrance and the city of LA, they are like perplexed, it's the law, so they have to abide by it. So there, some, some cities have developed um, over the last uh, year and a half some pretty cool guidelines for getting the places, um, up, <clears throat> getting the plans approved to convert your garage. So let's get into a little bit. This is um, here on my screen is is you know I I think your stereotypical granny flat. It'll it'll be there's a, a it can be as small if you guys can believe this as 150 square feet okay. And I think the max is 50% of the house, of the size of the house. Um, it could actually be up to 1,700 square feet if it was detached. So there's different cities have different guidelines, okay? Uh, Torrance is very uh, lenient. I don't know, for lack of a better word, 
to be honest with you, I'm, I'm just shocked. I'm shocked that they're... Because you guys have to understand that outside of the city of Beverly Hills, a granny flat, an ADU was really frowned upon. City of LA, pff, forget it. They did not want that. In, in areas that were single family, okay? If you're in a multifamily area, that's a different story. If you're in a single family residence area in the city of LA, they did not want you to do that. Now there's a mechanism, um, thanks to this law, for allowing that to occur legally, okay? So you can convert your garage. You can build a separate unit, okay? A complete separate unit, like what you see on the screen, or you can actually just convert the existing garage and put a bathroom in there, put a little kitchenette in there, and you know, some sliding doors, little private entrance, and you're ready to go. So you can rent these places out. This is that is not a cloud on your title. You're you're you you own it outright. Obviously, you know, if you borrow money against it, you know, owe a little money to the bank. But if you can fund it uh, with some with your own personal uh, cash, we also have an amazing lender that can lend you without putting a t a second on your property. And it's uh, funded through a, a PACE program through the, the uh, county where basically you, you pay back the county assessor, the, the county of Los Angeles, the county of Orange, uh, you know, basically whatever county you're in. We have some amazing financing that we can talk to you about that later. Right now we're just kind of recapping what an ADU is. You could have one bedroom, two bedrooms. It could be a studio. It's amazing what you can do now. Uh, with with this law are we picture in picture okay so right here you can have a uh, this this basically depicts a, a detached it can be attached or detached from the structure it it's really I'm, I'm, I'm shocked right because like this has been like a, 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 a major major killer of a lot of projects over the years that people wanted to do people have been wanting to do this for a long time right they want to offset some of their costs so, so let's talk a little bit about, got to, let me give you some visual aids here so, so you have a better understanding of what we're talking about. Um, you know, this, this is basically your, your house. You got a, a few auxiliary units right here, something like that. So, so it could be detached, okay? Can be attached. Uh, this is a good example of a detached unit, okay? It looks like uh, kind of the Pasadena area, uh, northern, kind of north LA, Eagle Rockish. Kind of architecture so that's so there there's a there's a set formula okay you can you can um build it from scratch or you can convert an existing building and and make it uh, a dwelling now attached is obviously attached there's some some there's some uh significant there's some significant uh Limitations when you're attached, you have to. Uh, you, the the new unit cannot be greater than fifty percent of the existing house. Okay, that is one of the big caveats. There's a couple of them, a couple of other ones, but that's that's the big one. Is that it can't be more than fifty uh, percent of the house. Now this is important if you have a house that's say eleven hundred square feet. A lot of houses here in Torrance and Redondo Beach <clears throat> are between eleven to 1400 square feet so if you go detached you know you're gonna be you know you'd be making a, a pretty small um, you know, this would be 500 square feet something like that so if it is detached then you're limited by the the ratio of open space and that varies from city to city okay it's well, sorry it's a little technical I don't want to get too technical just want to give you kind of a general idea of what the possibilities are so this is a good example of an attached ADU the front door this is going to be a probably a french door with uh maybe two french doors actually um, and it's you can see it's attached to the existing house uh, you can actually convert the garage man you can convert the garage do you understand what what that means you can literally get your garage get your car out of it get all of the junk that you've been parking in there for the, the last 20 years sorry reflecting a little bit of situation in my garage but you can empty it all out and you can turn your garage your garage into a cash machine because you can rent it out you can rent it out to family members you can rent it out to strangers the only thing you cannot do is you cannot Airbnb it they don't want that the different cities have like you know big no-no um, 
laws about that. But they, they definitely want like a long-term rental, right? Like a six month or more rental. And you can legitimately convert your garage. I get a, a lot of questions about adding a second floor to the garage, like this, this kind of deal here, they added a second story. You can definitely do that. You just have to make sure that there's no power lines, that the building isn't in an easement. And I'm gonna show you a case study of a project that we're working on right now that it <coughs> it is in an easement. So one of your challenges to the ADU situation is to make it look nice, to make it look like it wasn't an afterthought. Like, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I don't dig too much this unit here on the right. Like, that's just too, too extreme, those roof lines. But I don't know, you may like it. Why don't you give, give me a comment? Does anybody uh, like this thing? And oh, hey, by the way, I'm gonna be uh, giving you some quiz questions. I got some giveaways. I forgot to mention the first five people that share, whether you shared it live or you shared it after the fact, the first five have a cup of coffee on me or a Home Depot gift card. The gift cards are in different, uh, different quantities. Uh, so specify which one you'd like and uh, we'll have a quiz question here at the end because you know I like giving you a little quiz and I always buy dinner if you get it right. So let's, let's keep moving here. All right, so this is a case study deal. This is a project that we're working on right now, an ADU deal in the city of LA. It is probably, you know, as far as my first LA ADU deal, it's probably the worst one that I could have taken on, okay? Meaning that is very challenging because this ADU has to occur in the front of the property. See, they most cities are very specific. They want the ADU to be at the rear of the property. Uh, or, or, you know, if you have a garage in the front, you got to, you're gonna have to deal with that. But the city of LA specifically wants the ADU to be at the rear of the property. The problem is that the rear of the property is a mountainside. Literally, it's a hillside going up and I can't build it on there. There's, there's because of the grade, there's severe slope. So I can't build on that. So I got to build it at the front, at the front of the road. So this is the floor plan. As you can see, it's a huge unit, 641 square feet. You basically get a living space. You get, you know, relatively small kitchen. You know, I'm not gonna say it's it's a huge kitchen, uh, but you have a, a pretty big living space, and you have large walk-in closet and a legitimate bedroom. This is and th this particular project is over in Benedict Canyon, very nice neighborhood. So we're gonna have literally an uphill battle trying to get this ADU approved. But there is there is a little a little wiggle room in the law in the law so this is the first it's the same project okay? and you can see that this is this is detached right ideally the homeowners would like this floor plan okay but i don't think that the city is going to allow this so that's why i created this floor plan right so i'm a pretty persistent guy so if, if i don't think that the city is going to pass something i i work really hard on behalf of my customers to make sure that they get as close to what they want as possible now, granted, this is this scenario is not ideal for them because it's attached, but it sure beats um, getting rejected on, on the no. So, by the way, for those of you wondering, if you're going to have to come up with plans and and you know what happens if you you know that doesn't get approved and you lose the money. So, what we did with this deal is, I think for twenty five hundred bucks, we developed a few different concept plans and we allowed enough hours to go to the city and go argue with them over nothing, but over stuff to try and get the plans approved. So uh, relatively speaking for a project that's gonna be a couple hundred thousand bucks, you know, out of pocket two grand to see if you can do it. Um, for, I don't know, some of you it makes sense, some of you may not make sense. I'd like to hear your comments. Does it make sense to you to spend, to invest 2,500 bucks to see what the city will prove? You have to understand that this ADU situation is new, right? It is a 180 degree turn of opinion about even approving this, right? It's completely different. Now they have to approve, they have to figure out a way to approve it if possible, because that's the argument of the law. The law is real specific, I read the whole thing. And the, the city can't put barriers um, that would severely restrict the development of the ADU. So they have to look for reasons to approve it. So we got so that's why we have a few different options here. And that's why you have this, this kind of low cost um, trial period 
where we just we don't do any engineering on it yet we just do the floor plans and the site plan to see if the city will approve it so this is what i don't think the city will approve but my, but is the utopic uh, condition in my client's eyes and then this is this is what i think the city will approve which is which is the building attached here this gray area attached to the main building anyway i don't know you guys tell me what do you think is it a good idea bad idea love to hear your comments on it if you have a little bit of hate go ahead and post that too you know if you think it's a really lousy idea on my part i'd like to hear what you think so here we go this is this is a job in torrance man god we got a we got a good win this is an adu in torrance a detached deal and i just got word yesterday that most of the planners have seen it there's a few other people in public works and stuff like that that have to put chime in their 25 cents but it looks like the concept is going to get approved I think that they're gonna probably ask us to make some of it a little bit smaller um, cut down on the square footage a little bit because we don't have quite enough open space but it's gonna be close so so on this deal the proposed ADU is like 800 square feet and then the second floor is another seven and change so I think combined it's it's like a little bit less than 1500 square feet so it's it's pretty pretty darn big the, now remember that on the top end of the scale for detached it's 1700 square feet or if it's attached boom you go to 50 percent uh, so the house is not very big I think the house is like 1300 square feet you can see some of the specs on this place here anyway long story short this is an ideal deal there's there is only one problem of course the the existing building as it is now um, is in the Edison easement okay the Edison easement by the way if you get your uh, if you get our, our uh, quiz question right I'm gonna throw in a, a free ball cap for you guys so I'm gonna see how many of you were listening if you were listening to the broadcast correctly or, or attentively you're a good student you would know what the minimum size of the ADU is for the first two people no first first person that gets it right the first person gets it right I'll buy you dinner at the beautiful delicious and absolutely detrimental to your waistline Olive Garden by dinner at the Olive Garden and you can sit there and have dinner on me with a nice fresh Bay City's construction baseball cap okay first person that gets uh, gets it right how much how much is the minimum square footage on an ADU all right you get the uh, get free lunch on me Brian what do you got what do you got over there we want to say to one of our viewers Aaron Hernandez is joining us today Aaron Hernandez welcome Aaron Hernandez where are you from where are you calling from Aaron Hernandez Uh, an ADU all right so let me let me show you this this is kind of pretty cool these are the elevations to this freaking ADU now you may be looking at this right you're thinking dude, dude that's a house yeah yeah it's a house it's it's huge it's amazing that they're gonna let this thing happen you know it's a complete reversal of, of years decades decades of fighting this type of development so cool deal cool deal in this case this is an amazing family um amazing family they're they're having uh, um the father the guy the guys uh, the owner's dad is going to be moving in helping out with uh, with his kids it's 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 awesome that this is the actual intended purpose right so um a lot of baby boomers are retiring this is kind of like a little bit of reverse but a lot of baby boomers are retiring and they need some help uh, kids moving in parents moving in basically families um, coming back together right after many years living apart and this type of a scenario allows that to occur okay so it's a it's a cool deal uh, this is the elevations for the place and um, I think you guys would uh, find it interesting um, so this is some stuff we haven't built but this is some stuff that's out there in uh, different areas of the country that have been built um i you know i don't know about you guys but like like the whole, that whole slant thing I'm, I'm not a fan of this might be in portland oregon portland oregon yeah oregon washington i've seen like like stuff like that like 
I'm not a fan of that. I don't know. Do you guys like that? Do you guys like this architecture? Would you build this? Would you have this built at your house? I'll build it for you. You know, you're willing to pony up the cash and this is what you love. I will gladly build it for you. Benefits of an ADU. Uh, it is a major investment, but uh, it does add value to your property. Can be used for elderly housing. Can be used for housing older family members. It's a cool deal. Cool deal to keep families together. Um, space for kids. I don't know about you guys, but man, my teenage kids. My, my daughter's 14 now. I'd love to just have her go back to the, the house and the the house within the house. Keep her close enough, but give her give those teenage years a little bit of space. So this is kind of a, a, a cool little, little bungalow action right here. Kind of neat setup. City of, uh, by the way, the beach cities, particularly Redondo and stuff, they are going to want as much porous surface around the property as possible. Because over here by the beach, you have to, we need to absorb rainwater. We want it in the ground. We don't want it washing stuff into the ocean. We want it to be able to be absorbed. So that's a big deal here. If you guys are considering even adding to your house and stuff or adding flat work, um, consider a porous um, surface, uh, not just pavement. There's another kind of example of that. Empty nesters, moving into smaller deal, renting out the main house. It could happen. There's some government incentives. I have some amazing incentives that I just I just learned. Uh, I found a lender. Let's talk about costs and we'll talk about how to pay for it. Okay, let's, let's do that. So on an average, I think something like this, like this unit here. Um, what do you guys think? We left it blank. What do you guys think? What do you guys think that this unit costs to build? So this is about 450 square feet. What do you think it costs to build? buy you a cup of coffee if you get if you get the the answer right then so we got three basically three price points or three sizes these are kind of like where many of these things are landing so 450 square feet 700 square feet and then 1200 square feet and well, it's I guess that's 12,000 sorry it's 1200 square feet so these are some sample floor plans I think if you're going to um, be adding uh, more than 700 square feet, you know, if you're adding, if you're adding over a thousand square feet, you could expect to pay about $200,000. I think that's a real figure. In Torrance, you're going to be mandated to underground the utilities. So that's going to add like 15 grand to the deal. You know, it's, it's a lot of money. You're, you're also going to have to consider you may have to upgrade uh, like your sewer line. You're definitely going to have to upgrade your electrical panel and you'll have to underground um, getting to there. You know, and the, in the ADU, you're going to have AC. So, you know, you, you have to account for that. Probably going to have a 200 amp box. We have a question from one of our viewers. Okay, cool. Uh, Aaron Hernandez asks, oh, so can you build an ADU in LA County also? Or is it only the city of LA? It's the whole state of California. You can build an ADU anywhere in the state of California. The All of the local building uh, departments, the municipal building departments, LA Building Safety, Lomita, Torrance, if you're up north, Santa Clarita, all of these communities have to develop some guidelines for how they're going to um, allow the ADUs to be built. They must, they, they, they must allow them. So the, the county, the, the municipalities, excuse me, the city building and safety department is going to develop a guideline for how it's going to be done by neighborhood. So, but yes, yes, it can. ADU garage conversion. Okay, so I think a, a little garage conversion like this is probably going to run you between 60 to 85K. Some of you may be like, are you kidding me? The, remember, you have to run a sewer line, okay? Sewer is the most expensive deal. You have to run new vents. These garages, they don't have they don't have anything. Many of them don't have, unless it was an illegally converted garage, they don't have any infrastructure. There's no water, there's no power to them. And the house 
their current existing electrical panel very commonly very commonly does it cannot power up does not have enough juice enough space enough capacity to power up the ADU so you got you have to upgrade a lot of your infrastructure so you're gonna spend money you're gonna invest money into parts of your house that are existing in order to be able to increase the capacity for the, the ADU and it's it's just a it's gonna be an added expense okay this is definitely in, in Portland this is like a kind of a nightmare here in California to build this because of our earthquake situation that's like a, talk about like a soft story so you know interesting stuff um, this is this is totally buildable I can totally see this being built in um, the desert communities even in um, in some of the larger lots in South LA some of the South LA areas have some good lots Torrance has some pretty good lots in some areas that you can build something like this so pretty cool even um, South Redondo so how to get started let's talk about that actually before we start with that let's take a quick break I know that you must be you might want to grab a, a soda or something like that we'll be right back stay tuned the kitchen you want today from Bay City's Construction in the Southern California and Los Angeles area. There is no better company who takes time out of the equation to get you a detailed plan of what your new kitchen will look like. Get your design plans done, your interior design plans done, an entire project scope done right now. Get your finished kitchen in 90 days or less. We are the best in the Los Angeles and Southern California area, and there's no need to shop anywhere else. Just get started with Bay City's Construction. Go to baycitiesconstruction.com. That's baycitiesconstruction.com. Looking for a bathroom remodel in the Southern California and Los Angeles area? If you've shopped and you've looked at prices and have no clue where to start, let Bay Cities Construction get you started with a quote of get design, interior design, project scope, and know exactly what it will cost to get your bathroom remodeled. There is no guesswork and no need to shop around. Just take time out of the equation and get your new bathroom in 90 days. Get your estimate now at baycitiesconstruction.com. That's baycitiesconstruction.com. Hey, what's up guys? We're back. We're going to talk about how to get started. What do you need to do? What can you build? What's it going to cost? All of that kind of stuff. So you're going to need a set of plans. What we are doing is we're putting together a site plan. <clears throat> so if you look on here, you're, basically you want to show the, the parameters of the lot, right? The perimeters of the lot. And then you want to show the existing building and then you want to show where your proposed ADU would be, how big it would be and what the floor plan is. So all of the cities have a um, kind of a two page requirement that will dictate certain dimensions, certain percentages of open space versus buildable space. All of those things have to be taken into consideration in the design of the new structure. And uh, so you, basically what we're doing for, for our customers is we're, we're putting together the existing floor, the existing site plan, which is the house and the property, and then our proposed ADU size and location on the property. And we're putting it on, on, on kind of the shoulders of the city and seeing what they think, what, what the planners think. So you want to always start with uh, the planning department. Okay, you want to go with them first. They're the ones that have kind of like the jurisdiction of what the aesthetics are going to look like. Once they give you the green light, then you'll go to building and safety and you'll have to have engineering and all that stuff. So, But we don't want you to spend any money on engineering yet. What you need first is a site plan and you need somebody to represent you to the city so they can pitch pitch it to the city, um, pitch the project to the city and and put it put the most favorable conditions forward so that you know your your plans will be approved so one of the things that used to be a big I gotcha for denial of an ADU was the parking situation right the, for the longest time the city's always used on-site parking covered parking and closed parking as massive requirements for development this ADU law just like they just like totally destroy it. They're like, no, 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 no. You don't care. We don't care about that. In fact, you don't even have. You can lose parking 
on-site parking and park on the street if you live within a half a mile of public transit. That's right, folks. A half a mile of a freaking bus stop. If your house is within a half a mile of a freaking bus stop, you can actually lose parking and not be penalized for it uh, while, while pitching your ADU. It's amazing. It's like, it's pretty unbelievable. Okay. This is kind of the kicker. No ADUs in hillside areas, unless they're within half a mile of public transit. And no ADUs between front of the primary residence and the street, which was my problem, is my problem, at the uh, the North LA deal over by Bennett Canyon. That's going to be, no pun intended, an uphill battle with the city to get that approved, but, you know, uh, people don't hire me for my looks. They hire me for my results, so... We're going we're gonna to see if we can make that happen. So there are some other restrictions. Uh, ADUs are only allowed in residential zoned areas with existing single family residences. ADUs are limited to only one per lot. So you can't stick freaking two units in there, okay? It has to be only one. I mean, you know, the idea is that, the idea behind that limitation is like, hey, look, if you bought a house, if you're if you're like a neighbor to somebody who's got an ADU and you bought a house in a single family residence, you bought it because you want to live in a in a neighborhood, in a in a single in a family neighborhood, right? Not in a multifamily neighborhood. If you want to live in a multifamily neighborhood, then you live in a condo or you know, in an apartment or you know, whatever. So that that's kind of the scenario. So there are a couple of there are some limitations. It isn't like, you know, it's open season. But it is definitely a lot more favorable now to getting your ADU approved. The other limitations is, again, it cannot exceed 50% of the primary residence if it's attached. <clears throat> if it's detached, it cannot be bigger than 1,200 square feet. Now, this change, uh, this is a little bit city sensitive. In some cities, that you can actually build a little bit bigger than that. Not much, but a little bit. Parking considerations, parking, parking. Who the hell needs parking? All you need to do is be within uh, half a mile of a uh, public transportation. You're good to go. But you have, you do have to, you do have to. Uh, you're limited by one. Oh my god, you're limited by one uh, space per unit. So if you can add a space to the to the deal. It's cool. Now, it's funny. Like, they're counting space as space on the lot. Okay? Space on the lot is okay. So, what does that mean? It means in the driveway. It means um, here in this house here. Like, like literally this whole driveway. When we're drawing up plans, we can draw a car there, a car there. And that's all part of the parking deal. Okay? So, a lot a lot less restrictions on the, on the parking consideration now. We have any questions? We do have a question from one, one of our viewers. Uh, Martha Templeton asks, so what are the rules for San Bernardino County? So I, I am not super versed with San Bernardino, but the, the, the requirements that, we're co that we've covered here um, during this webinar are very consistent from uh, county to county. And the cool part about LA County is that they're, because LA City in particular has the largest building and safety department of the county, many cities and subsequent counties mimic the guidelines that LA Building and Safety puts together. So they are the leader, um, and that, that holds true. I, I, we're here in Redondo and in Torrance and in the South Bay, and there's a ton of guidelines that these cities follow from LA, they follow the lead of LA Building and Safety. So you'll see a lot of consistencies. In San Bernardino, you may find less requirements because your lots are a lot bigger. Over here by the beach, our lots are so small, it's it's really kind of a lot more limiting. So you, you should be, it should be easier to do to do this over in San Bernardino. But I'll tell you what, if you send Brian, uh, if you instant message Brian uh, your address and your contact info, we'll gladly uh, um, call the, the city for you and get some of the guidelines and share it with you. I think it'd be... Uh, an interesting learning experience for us and uh, for you as well. Thanks for the question. Thank you, Martha, for tuning in. What else we got? We got anybody else? So let's see what else we got going on. We got the, this is the this is the Q and A, guys. Q and A. So please 
send us your questions. Love to talk to you about it. I know uh, Brian's got a couple more questions here. We're gonna we're gonna cover. Yeah, uh, one of the questions that we had on our previous episode about ADU, somebody asked, "Can I sell my ADU?" No, your eight. Well, not, well, you can sell your house, and the you know the ADU is part of the house. It's even though you may in some cities you may actually even get a separate address, a mailing address. The it, it is not a separate subdivided lot. It is it's still one lot with the ADU uh, designation on it. So you can't sell the ADU separate, basically. That's a great question. Another question, another common question that property owners have in regards to ADUs are, must the homeowner live on the property? No, the homeowner mustn't live on the property. Once you, you, if you're there, you, you, end up, you know, you're, you end up being there, you develop the property, you move, you can, you can move, you know, it's not, it's not a major limitation. Oftentimes, the homeowners do live on the property, but you don't have to. Uh, another question that we typically get is, what's the difference between an ADU and a guest house? You can rent your ADU out and make money. You're totally legal. You're legal. It's legal. You paid your taxes. You're legal. Do we have any questions? Are any of you guys watching wanting to know how to fund this thing? Because a lot of you may sit, may be thinking, man, you know, I don't have equity in my place yet, so how am I going to fund this? Well, we found a lender. Anybody, 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 write a little question mark on that? Send me a question mark. We found a lender that will fund a deal um, for home improvement for a lot of the the pay stuff, and and in in many cases, this, uh, an, building out an ADU. And you will pay the you will pay at a very reasonable rate, like seven percent, eight percent back the the cost of the construction, the full cost of the construction back through your property taxes through a special assessment. So let me tell you how beautiful that is. You do not have on your let's say your ADU costs a hundred thousand bucks. Okay, I don't know how. Let's say it costs two hundred thousand bucks. You will not have on your credit report a second loan for two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, you'll have a property tax assessment for that amount, and you can pay it back in twenty years. Here's the kicker: whatever it is that you pay back. So on on a typical loan, you got to talk to your CPA about this, okay? Because I'm not like your accountant. I'm not giving accounting advice. Uh, I'm not giving tax advice. I'm not a tax attorney, but property taxes. Are tax deductible okay so when you pay an assessment a property tax assessment your your CPA may say that it's tax deductible whereas uh, when you're borrowing money on your mortgage you're the only thing that's tax deductible is the interest right I mean not everybody knows that I'm not I have to be a tax person to tell you that you pay that you you're deducting the interest on your on your mortgage and it's common that your property taxes are deductible so Think about that. It, this is an alternate way of financing. It is at a very low interest rate, all things considered. There's some really cool uh, tax implications that are positive for you. There's some really cool, um, um, uh, the fact that you're, you're not being dinged. You don't have all of this debt on your, on your credit report because it's secured through the county assessor's office. So it's a different way to finance a deal. may not be for everybody. You may not like it. I don't know, but, but it is a good option for, for some people, and uh, it, I think it's probably a, a pretty interesting, cool thing to consider um, if you are looking to do a major home improvement project, something like an ADU. And if you have any questions about that, I'd love to talk to you about it, love to hear your questions. We're going to be having the lender uh, that has this financial product available uh, coming on to the show. So be on the lookout. Make sure you subscribe to our channel here so you get your alerts. And uh, give us a, a nice like and a thumbs up so that we can uh, and share it with your friends, okay? This is a resource for you. This is where we talk about all things real estate and construction. And uh, we want you to learn more. We want you to uh, go on to the Bay City's construction blog. Uh, we've got, I don't know, close to maybe 400 pieces of content on there about kitchen, bathroom remodels, home remodeling. Now soft story, retrofit, and ADUs, all sorts of stuff. 
It's all for you folks. It's absolutely 100% free. Check it out. This is uh, Steve and I. Steve's wearing the dark glasses. And um, we're here at uh, one of the training seminars. We've been in business 15 years, folks. We will help you with your design, do the architectural engineering, represent you with the city, manage your project, and do the construction. If you want to check out my license, my license is there. It's still good. Paid my bills. If you have any other questions, shoot up. What we else? Do, shoot, my, uh, shoot over to some other questions. Another question that we that we usually get is, can you build on top of garages? Can you build an ADU on top of a Yes, garage? you can build an ADU on top of the garage. Well, you know what? You know what the crazy part is. You can get you can convert a garage that no longer meets the setback requirements. Okay, they will honor and grandfather the fact that that building's been there that long and allow us to convert it for you. It's, you save tons of money by doing that by just doing a, a conversion. You can do a conversion maybe for 60 to like maybe 90,000 bucks, depending on how far all the infrastructure is and how much of your house has to be converted and all that. <clears throat> if you want to add a second story, it'll, it'll push you over 150 k But uh, you can definitely do it. You can get a big unit like the one that we showed here, the, the case study. So if you want to find out how big, um, give our offices a call. We'll, we'll draw up something for you. Uh, another question that we get, especially in, in smaller municipalities, is my town has not adopted any local ordinances. Does the state law apply? The state law is king. So they got they have to. Um, I think by now, you know, if it was earlier last year, you know, they were still kind of getting into it. But now they're, they're pretty hit. Most of the uh, municipalities have adopted at least some guidelines to help folks like us, our planners, our... Uh, designers uh, put together a, um, a comprehensive drawing for you so that we can pitch it to the city. What else we got? Another question that we that some of our viewers might have is uh, can modular homes or prefab manu manufactured homes be considered an ADU? I think in some some cities they're even allowing that if you can believe that. That's just crazy. I can't I can't believe I can't believe it myself. But in some cities they're allowing that. As long as you do, you do a permanent um, a permanent foundation to them. So, the tiny house revolution is in full swing. They're going to get a, a another shot on the arm. We'll be building these things for the next ten years. Pretty cool stuff. Anybody? Any other questions? Yeah. Another question is how long do these projects take to complete? Well, if it's converting a garage, it's, you know, it could be eight, twelve, could be eight, could be twelve weeks. Uh, a new build will be longer. It'll be probably closer to four months, realistically. So, something like that. Um, for our projects, once we have uh, a signed deal, projects approved, we do a construction schedule, so you'll know how long it's going to take when uh, when you give us the start date. Another question that we, we usually get from a lot of homeowners is, will this affect my property taxes? Yeah, you'll probably get reassessed. Yeah. Probably. I'm not a tax accountant, but I don't think that's a reason to do it or not do it, honestly. You know, uh, if you're especially if you're going to be renting it out, you're going to be, some places you can get 2300 bucks, 2500 bucks. You know, if you, if you spend 150000 and you're going to be getting twenty five hundred dollars or twenty two hundred dollars, you know, you'll get that money back relatively quick. It's about twenty thousand dollars a year. You could get that money back in less than eight years. That's not bad. And then from that point on, it's all, it's all profit. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't freak out about getting reassessed. You know. But that's just me. What do you think? Do you think you should would would reassess would a uh, reassessment on your property taxes? be a deal killer for you I'd like to hear your comments below some of you may disagree with me uh, another question that we have is do I have to move out if I build an ADU is it going to impact typically no typically not you may have a couple of days that you'll have some disruptance in service like if we have to tap into your sewer line or if we have to tap into your main line or if we have to switch over your power but I don't think I, I don't see a condition where you'd have to move out like I don't, I don't think so especially if it's detached You're just gonna have like your yard wrecked for a few months but we'll put it back together 
Another question is, do you need special um, plans for ADU? Yes, you need architectural engineering and you really need an advocate for your cause. It, these things are not established, right? So it's all of them, each city, each plans, it's brand new. So you need an advocate for it, okay? You need somebody to pitch it. And uh, I, I can't stress the importance of that enough. Uh, another question is, what if I want to save some money and I want to handle the permits myself? You can. You, you can do an owner build. You can take all the time off work that you need. You can leave work early to go drop off materials. You can leave work early to go take plans over to the city and meet contractors. Yeah, you can totally do it yourself if you wanted to. May or may not be a good idea, but you can. Another question is, uh, what's the very first step in getting started? So the very first step is to, to, to have... A pretty, a, a, a pretty good understanding of what is the size that you want because that determines what you get, right? Like, do you, you know, 700 square feet versus 1,200 square feet? You're talking one bedroom, two bedrooms, a studio apartment. Do you want just to do a, a straight garage conversion and not do any additional buildings? Um, those are all things that stem from the one decision you have to make, which is how big do you think you want it? And then the second part is give us a call. We'll put the plans together, put a game plan, put a budget together, a game plan for getting the plans approved, a game plan for getting the project built, and, uh, and a tentative budget for the deal. That's step number two. By the way, you can do that by giving us a call, clicking on the, uh, the button below and uh, putting your information together. You can definitely we can start doing that right now. Uh, another question is, uh, do contractors need a special license for ADUs or can... Oh, that's a great question. General? That's a great question. Any general contractor can do that for you. Any general contractor, B, B class license, um, can do that for you. You should probably hire somebody in the city. Somebody has a good amount of experience in the city to be built. Okay? That's an important deal. You have a good... Um, it's not necessary, but it's good. Um, like, I'll give you an example. We have uh, a good reputation in the city of Torrance, uh, Redondo Beach, or Mosa, Manhattan Beach. We know a lot of the inspectors because we do jobs there all the time. So it's it's um, it's not rec it's not like mandated that you hire a local contractor, but a local contractor that's well known and reputable it goes a long way to help uh, smooth things over with the um, the various inspectors and city planners and stuff like that. And uh, one last question from Sandy in Redondo Beach. She asks, can I buy the materials myself? Yes. You can buy the materials yourself if you want to. If you hire us to do it, you can't buy the materials because you don't know what to buy. So we buy all the materials and we send you a bill for it. Um, and that's the best way to do it because we negotiate very good deals with our vendors. We have relationships with them, stuff like that. But to answer your question, Sandy, you can absolutely buy the stuff yourself. Don't think it's a good idea, but you can. Any other questions? Uh, that's it for now. Okay, folks. Hey, I loved spending this time with you. Loved answering your questions. Love um, answering your questions even later. If you watch this on rebroadcast, by all means, please ask us. Brian is always keeping a close eye on our channels, making sure that our customers, our potential customers, are being t taken well taken care of. If you want to learn more about us, you want to see some reviews on what people have, are saying about us, you can visit these fine um, websites and uh, get an idea of what people are saying. If you want to learn more about getting your project built out, whether it's an ADU, a kitchen or bathroom remodel, or a total home remodel, please give our offices a call. My name is Alex Rodriguez. Love uh, spending this time with you. I want to thank you for being here. And we will see you next week at the show. And I always, always reminding you folks, uh, you don't need a contractor. You need a team of pros. Hey, YouTubers. Did you get a notice to comply from the city of Santa Monica or Los Angeles? You're going to need a pair of these. 
You're gonna need some plans. You're gonna need architectural, engineering, and city representation. I am providing a turnkey solution for you. For $12,497, I'm gonna give you architectural, engineering, and city representation. If you want more information about soft story repair, please visit our website, baycitiesconstruction.com. Follow the link below and give our offices a call at 888-881-7355. My name is Alex Rodriguez with Bay Cities Construction, reminding you, you don't need a contractor, you need a team of pros. Hey everybody, I'm back to give you an amazing offer. The webinar is over. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed it, but I wanna make you an offer, and I always have a really cool offer at the end of our webinars. If you give our offices a call, you're interested in getting ADU built, you're interested in getting a home addition built, we're doing it for $12,500. That's all in for architectural, engineering, and C representation, okay? We will cover everything, that we'll talk with you, put together a plan, a floor plan that you'll love, uh, a site plan that you'll love, and we will represent you at the city, $12,500. And if you book with us before the end of May, I will give you $3,000 back towards construction costs, okay? I'm gonna pay for your first payment of your construction costs. Give our offices a call. If you're interested in learning more about our financing options, please give my office a call, put together a package for you. It's my job to take care of you as our customer. I look forward to talking to you, look forward to meeting you, and look forward to doing business with you. My name is Alex Rodriguez reminding you, you don't need a contract, you need a team of pros.